It's time for the Hockey Writers Grind Line. A weekly show covering everything Detroit Red Wings. Brought to you by our own iconic top line of Wings writers. Sit back and enjoy the grind. Welcome to the Hockey Writers Grind Line. Brought to you by the Morning Skate, the Hockey Writers Morning Newsletter that is jam-packed with the best hockey stuff on the planet. Sign up today at morningskate.io for free delivery to your inbox Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Also, drop us a like and subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay on top of all of the best Hockey Writers content. I'm your host, Kyle Knopp, and today I'm joined by my line mates, Devin Little and Logan Horn. Guys, excellent to have you back here in August, the first Friday of August as we record Friday, dropping on Saturday. How are you both doing? Uh, I'm doing great. Uh, (laughs) Thanks for having me. Um, I'm excited to chat about some stuff. There's not a ton going on, but there's lots to talk about prospect wise and, you know, some speculation about the future. So I'm excited. Absolutely. Absolutely. Devin, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. Good to hear. Good to be here with both you boys. Kyle, looks like you got a a little bit of a summer glow going on in your face. I'm I'm, I'm digging it. (laughs) Yeah. I, uh, well, I, it was took two weeks off and then last week went down to visit my sister in North Carolina and we went whitewater rafting and, uh, that'll do it. Spent the whole (laughs) whole weekend outside, which was a lot of fun. A lot of, a lot of brewery hopping in Asheville, uh, North Carolina. So if you're down there, check it out. It is fun. Uh, but let's jump right into our show. Uh, Logan, like you said, a lot going or not a lot going on. Uh, we do have prospect stuff with the Holinka Gretzky cup. Uh, so that's actually jumping right into the one good, one bad this week. That's going to be my bad. Uh, was the USA showing at the Holinka yeah. Gretzky cup. Uh, typically one of the front runners to be meddling in the tournament. Uh, they are currently playing Slovakia for fifth place uh, on a Friday in which the gold medal and bronze medal games aren't even until Sunday. So, uh, this is kind of a new, uh, realm for the U S at this tournament. So, uh, they definitely didn't quite show up, but that might be good for international hockey, but not good for the U S prospects. And then, uh, my good keeping it in with the juniors, uh, Donovan Sabrango gets yeah, the yeah. alternate captain for team Canada heading into the world junior tournament next week. So, uh, mm-hmm. that's going to be my good, my bad Logan. Let's kick it off with you, bud. What is your one good one bad from this past week? Sure. Uh, my good for this week is an interview that just came out a couple days ago on the Red Wings official YouTube channel. Uh, Daniela Bruce interviewing yeah. Steve Eiserman. It's almost a half hour. Um, it's just a really great listen for, mm. you know, a great interview, but also mm. it's just a nice reminder that uh, the Red Wings have someone really well adjusted at the helm. Like he's just so well spoken, Eiserman, and yeah. he clearly knows what he's talking about. So <laughs> that's, I mean, it's at least comforting, but it's also interesting to to hear some tidbits about um, how he views the team and the moves they've made this summer. So I recommend that. Recommend checking that out. Uh, my bad for the week. Don't know if it happened actually in the last two weeks or not, but with the the World Juniors coming up again next week on Tuesday, uh, with the the rescheduled ones, uh, just the fact that Marco Casper isn't going to be there, he's not playing for Team Austria. He was a captain in December, but he's working towards the uh, the SHL season now. Hopefully, he goes next December. That'd be a lot of fun because I'm sure they'd love to have him out in Austria, but. Uh, yeah, that's my bad. I think it would just be a lot of fun to watch him play again, but I'll be all right. Yeah, I, I agree. There's quite a few big names not going to this tournament in August, which makes sense because a lot of these players are getting ready for their NHL training camps in their per- hopeful professional seasons to start. But yeah, you're absolutely right. Not having Casper there is kind of a big blow to Red Wings fans to be able to get to see what he can do at the international level. Uh, but I think if he's playing in the SHL this year, I would have to assume he will be cleared to play in the December tournament for the 2023 uh, World Juniors, which uh, um, you know, would be even better, you would think, because you'd have half a season of uh, the SHL under him and then get to go play against junior, uh, you know, junior players and yeah. and hopefully get to really dominate then. So a uh, good call out, especially on the Daniela Bruce interview. Uh, yeah. I was fantastic. I watched it the other day and uh, shout out you know, to her for conducting such a fantastic interview. Absolutely. All right, Devin, over to you. What is your one good and one bad from this past week or two weeks? Uh, I'm going to keep mine brief because uh, it's 
it's a situation that's probably uh, better to be talked about on a different uh, different day, different platform, different whatever. Uh, my bad is the situation with uh, Mel Pearson in the University of Michigan. And my good is that it is rectified. He is no longer the head coach. Um, and I'm uh, as a as a Michigan fan, I am looking forward to seeing somebody, uh, a new coach come in and uh, clean house and get that program uh, back to where it belongs, which is a respected and uh, prestige program across the country. So happy to see uh, happy to see him go. <laughs> well, yeah, it's something we can certainly maybe bring back uh, on another show since there are a ton of prospects that play in Michigan uh, out of that Michigan program, but uh, certainly not on our roster for today. So let's move forward with today's episode of the grind line and let's get right into it with uh, talking about the Detroit Red Wings free agent frenzy. And I want to get your thoughts on this and Devin, I'm going to come right back to you. Do you think all of the moves that they did this off season, will that block their top rookies from making the opening night roster? I think that um, when it comes to the forwards, so Giannis and Berggren, Elmer Soderblom, anybody else, I think that the path forward got a lot tougher to get through. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm not going to say they don't have an opportunity, but I do think that it got a lot tougher for them to get in there barring any trades or anything like that between now and the beginning of the season. Um, I, as much as I firmly believe that Bergeron is, is he's proved himself. He's right. He's NHL ready. Um, I just don't know that a spot's going to be there for him with everybody else that's already on the team. So uh, I think for the forwards, I think things got a lot tougher. Now, as for defense, um, I think the main name we talk about when it comes to a rookie making the team is Simon Edvinson. Mm -hmm. And I think, Believe it or not, even though there are, I believe, eight or nine NHL bodies signed by the Red Wings right now, I do think Edvinson still has a path forward to um, joining the opening night roster as a rookie. Um, and the main reason why is because that left side, we talked about this last week. Yeah, they've got a lot of bodies on it now. They've got Sherratt, they've got Mata, they've got Osterley and others, but they don't have that dynamic uh, guy that can play in all situations like the right side has with uh, Mark Sider. So I think if Edvinson mm -hmm. can come in and show that he belongs, basically, he's going to get a spot. You know, Eisenman has talked about this with uh, Raymond. They kind of thought that he would have to at least start in the AHL last year. But through uh, through training camp and even like the prospects tournament, he showed he's he's ready to go. And if mm -hmm. Edvinson shows he's ready to go, he's going to play. Absolutely. Uh, good call out. I think you are 100% right. And especially comparing uh, to Raymond last year, because I, we were on this show talking about the same, same situation last summer. And we were all saying Raymond will likely start in the AHL. And he, he proved uh, that he belongs in the NHL. And uh, yes, last year's team is not quite as uh so we say stacked as this year's coming team but uh in comparison i think you're absolutely right it does make the road that much harder for these young rookies uh logan i'm gonna i'm gonna swing this over to you so did the detroit red wings free agent frenzy block their top rookies from making the opening night roster uh i think it does but i think it, that that i think that that's a good thing yeah um I, I agree with you, Devin. It seems like on defense, it's not as big a deal because Edvinson still feels like a realistic is a realistic possibility. Um, you know, you have Sherratt and Mata, but then who is he competing with? Like uh, Jake Wallman doesn't have a contract, is recovering from shoulder surgery. He's not going to be there at the start of the year. So Osterley, I guess, is his main competition. And if you had to pick between him and Simon Edvinson, I mean, I know who I'd pick, but, <laughs> but I'm not Derek alone. So who knows what'll happen? Yeah, I'm, but, I'm um, pretty sure it would be uh, unanimous across this board here. Logan. Yeah, <laughs> I feel pretty good about that. Yeah. Um, but then, like you said, Devin, when it comes to some of the forwards, Soderblom, Soderblom and Berggren, they're going to have a much tougher time cracking the roster, even though Berggren had a great season last year in the AHL. Uh, there's a lot of new coaches that they have to convince. They have to get on, on their good sides. Um, I don't know. You don't, you don't gift roster spots to rookies. Um, the only teams that do that are terrible teams. So you don't really want to have to do that. And so I think it's in those players best interests that they have to earn that spot. They have to fight for it. They have to be better than the player they're replacing. And I think that's the best thing for the prospects and the best thing for the Red Wings overall. So I'm happy about it. 
Absolutely. And I have to, you know, a thousand percent agree with you that you don't gift roster spots to rookies uh, unless you're a completely rebuilding team. They have to earn them. And we saw it last year with Raymond, like Devin said, like you Mm -hmm. said, Logan, he earned that spot. You know, we were sitting here last year saying he's going to be up there, but it will take some time. He was up there the whole season. He earned that spot. Uh, So for me, the short answer is no. If these rookies earn it, if they should be at the NHL level, they will be there on opening night, Uh, whether that's, you know, Edvinson, whether that's Bergeron, uh, they will be there on opening night if they deserve to be on that roster. You know, now if we're talking about, does it make it harder for them to come up through the season? Uh, You know, not necessarily on opening night. um, Then I would say that the pathway is still there because there's injuries. There's other things that can happen over the course of a long season. Uh, But in terms of making it to opening night, it certainly is a lot harder, but I think the short answer, no, uh, if they, if they deserve to be there, they will be there. All right. Uh, let's move on. So I want to talk about Red Wings that are make that are entering make it or break it seasons. And I want to get your thoughts on who those players are specifically. If there is one that jumps out at you, Devin, I want to start with you. Who is one Detroit Red Wing that is entering a make it or break it season? And what do they need to do to make it? That was me pulling the low hanging fruit. Uh, I'm going to have to say (laughs) Philip Zadina. Uh, Obviously uh, he has not signed a contract yet. He's still a restricted free agent, but uh, Eisenman talks about him as somebody that could take a step forward and propel the team forward. So Um, I assume the plan is still to get him signed and bring him back for this season. Um, And, you know, we, we, we talked about it many times throughout last season. He did not have the season. Anybody was hoping he would have, he didn't have the season he was hoping he would have. Mm -hmm. Um, And he's a player that, you know, obviously he was picked sixth overall for a reason. He had a ton of potential um, coming out of that draft year and he's flashed it many times since he's joined the Red Wings. He's flashed it in spurts. He's gone. Uh, he he had. Um, it was the twenty. It was the uh, year that was shortened by the uh, by the pandemic. Mm-hmm. He had uh, fifteen points in twenty eight games. That's not bad at all. And then he ended up uh, going down with an injury, and then COVID hit, and then the season was over. Um, so he's he's shown that he can produce, and then since then he's just you know he hasn't been able to put it together consistently. So I think for him, mm-hmm. this is a big year for him to come in and show that he can produce on a consistent basis. He doesn't need to be a top line player. That's what they have Lucas Raymond there for now. Mm -hmm. He doesn't even necessarily Mm -hmm. have to be a second line guy. (laughs) Would you like to see him be a second line guy? Absolutely. But if he can be a third line guy that ships in 20 goals and 40 points and does it on a fairly consistent basis, you take that and you, you take it and you run away with it because he's still only 22 Um, plenty of room for him to grow. But uh, this is it. If he has another year, like he had last season, he's not going to be a Red Wing anymore. He's going to be a trade piece. He's going to be let go. I I firmly believe that this is his, that the 2022-23 season is his last shot to really stake a claim in the Red Wings future. Uh, Great call out. And yeah, it might be a little bit of the low hanging fruit, but I think that's why it is low hanging fruit because of those expectations that were set when he joined the team that have yet to be lived up to. So good call out there, Devin. Logan, coming over to you. Who is one Red Wing that is entering a make it or break it season? And what do they need to do to make it? Oh, man, it's tough because you're right. That's low hanging fruit, but it just feels like the right answer. Like there's no one uh, who whose fate with the Red Wings seems to lean so heavily on this next season. Like you look at other young players who haven't quite lived up to their potential, like Michael Rasmussen. Had a, kind of had his make it or break it season last year and seems to have started carving a role out for himself. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you have Joe Valeno, but he's a little too young, doesn't quite have the experience to have this much pressure on him. Uh, so it feels like Zadine is the right answer. Um, you don't get drafted sixth overall for nothing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, You can get drafted 15th overall for being tall. Um, but you don't get drafted <laughs> sixth overall. You don't get drafted True. sixth. Um, so... Like I personally, I don't see like top 10 talents. I really don't like, sometimes I'll say it, but I don't think there's such thing as being a bust. I think Mm -hmm. it comes down to your opportunity and the situation that you get dropped into. Sometimes it's rushed to the NHL too soon. Sometimes it's coaching systems that just don't fit. 
Um, and, you know, cross your fingers. Maybe that's what it's been. Um, and Derek Lalone, his new systems and maybe some consistency uh, with where Zadina ends up in the lineup will help. But, you know, you, on the other side, you hear lots of people like, oh, it's so good. Just put him next to, to Verana and he plays really well. Or like, you got to put him on the power play and then he'll be good. But it's like, he's got to find some consistency. Mm -hmm. Like, he, he's not going to be in the top six this year. It's too full now with Kopp and Perron coming in. And he's definitely not cracking that top line unless something major changes. So he's got to show that he could be a top six guy. And if Verana leaves or if Bertuzzi gets traded or something, then maybe he could slot in. But I don't know. That's a that's a big if. Um, so it definitely feels like Zadine is hitting his make or break point this year. The one point I really want to highlight that you just made, Logan, was filling in to a new system and Derek Lalonde's system and might the change of coaching staff be what it takes for Zadina to get through this. And I think that's a big part of why this makes it a make it or break it season for him is because of that new coaching staff yeah. and his opportunity to continue to produce, you know, he's going to have offensive opportunities, but playing a middle six role instead of a top six role. So I think you're absolutely mm -hmm. right there in that if he can, can show that consistency this season uh, with this new coaching staff, I believe his responsibilities will increase and that will uh, start to carve out a role for himself as well. But you're both, both of you are 100% right in which the consistency is the biggest factor because there has been very, very little of it in his game. Before we move on, I want to throw out two other names to you that I kind of had as players entering a make it or break it season and get your thoughts on these two players. Uh, the first one I want to throw out is Pew Suter. Do you feel like this 2022, 23 season is a make it or break it season for Pew Suter? Uh, Devin. Uh, yes. And no. Um, I think he's, I think he's shown that he's definitely like an NHL player. Like I don't, um, I don't think he's uh, I, I don't doubt his ability to contribute to the team. Um, and I think him, uh, you know, bringing in cop, uh, helps him a lot because I think he's going to be slotted in on the third line. I think that's exactly where he needs to be. Um, but I also think that, um, it's a make it or break it for him in the sense that, uh, he could be a trade piece, you know, mm -hmm. this year he could be, you know, it, it's, I, I think with, uh, with Casper coming in now with cop coming in and other guys developing, mm -hmm. uh, further down the system, uh, it, you know, pretty easy to move on from Suter if the right guys show that they're ready to go. So I think it's a make it in the sense that um, if he's going to be with the Red Wings beyond the 2022, 23 season, uh, he's got to really show that he's uh, he belongs with this team. And he, he is this team's uh, bona fide third line center. Good point there, Devin uh, Logan. What about you? Pew Suter make it or break it season this year. Um. I, I would, I, I'd say, yeah, that's a, it's a bit of a make it or break it year. It's, it's the last year of his contract. So, you know, he's playing for another contract. Usually when I think of make it or break it, it's someone under team control still for a little bit, whether a longer contract or RFA status like Sedina, where it's like, they got to figure it out or they're not going to land here. But yeah. it could, if, if things go south, he might not have another contract in the NHL, might go back to Switzerland. I think he used to play in. Mm -hmm. Who knows, but I'm, I feel pretty confident he's an NHL player. So I, I think he would, but um, yeah, this seems like a pretty good chance for him to show himself as a third line center. Second line center was a little too much to ask of him. Mm -hmm. Honestly, he, he was, he's not built for that. Um, so maybe the, the lower pressure, lower expectations, um, maybe he can excel in that and they'll bring him back for a couple more years, maybe not. And he'll be floating around in free agency next summer. Excellent. And then one final name coming right back to you, Logan. I just want to get this one out there. I think this is definitely a make or break season for him. Philip Peronic. Yeah, that's a tough one. Um, <laughs> all like the defense core is changing like crazy. Hold on. Let's just click it's open. Um, right side defense. I don't know. There's, there's not a lot of competition for him right mm -hmm, now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um you know he's behind cider you're set like you never <laughs> like no one expects you to play top minutes ever top power play maybe some penalty kill but like there's not a lot of prospects coming in 
there's only been depth defenders coming in through free agency. Um, doesn't mean they won't try to move on from him, but I feel like <laughs> other than Cider, who is an unfair comparison, I feel like there's no one for the Red Wings to compare him against yeah, yeah. on their own team. Um, so as long as he's okay, I think they'll be happy. And, and I think, I think it'll work out for him play maybe alongside Mata or yeah. Edvinson, maybe, maybe try to anchor Edvinson a little bit, but um, I don't know. I don't, uh, I wouldn't say it's a make it or break it. I think he's here next year pretty well, no matter what. Okay. Uh, thank you for playing along, Logan. I know I didn't prepare you, but neither of you Sorry. for these two names. So uh, Devin, over to you. What do you think of Philip Peronic on a make it or break it season? I think I, I think I know where you're coming from with this because um, it wasn't that long ago that he was the Red Wings best defenseman. And that was, yes. Not, it wasn't because led, he was led like the league in scoring or not. Yeah, the league, sorry. The team, <laughs> the the team, team. is scoring. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No. And, yeah. and it wasn't because he was like this fantastic top line defender. It was just the best guy they had, but yeah. he was, mm. he, he fared well for himself. Um, I think that the, I still say the best thing that ever happened to him was Sider became an NHL player because that bumped sure. him down to a spot oh, yeah. where he doesn't have to uh, face top line competition. Um, I think it's, so I think I agree with Logan. I'm not, I'm not looking at the season, looking at the season as like a super urgent thing where he really needs to like show up and be a fantastic guy. But I also do think that this is, um, this is going to be an important season for him because he needs to, uh, I wouldn't say that he's necessarily cemented a spot with the core of the team. Mm -hmm. I think that if the right player became available and Eisman was going to put together a trade package, I think Kronik would be a player that gets in that package as kind of a, you know, whatever. Yep. Um, Mm -hmm. I think that's where you're coming from with this. Yep. So I think if he's going to establish himself as like, no, he's going to be a Red Wing for a long time. This is probably where he's got to really start to do it. But I also think that, if he doesn't do it this year, I think next year is going to be like the, the real, like you got to do it. So yes. And no, if it's, not, <laughs> if it's not this season, it'll be next. That's the make it or break it. So I got, I got two yeses and nos from Devin for the yeah, two, yeah. two yes. curveballs I threw. Yeah. I, love it. I, think, I think you just followed them both off. So we'll call that, we'll call <laughs> <Yep>. that good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, so I, to me, at least I see Suter kind of as uh, same boat, um, you know, as chronic, like, both could be trade packages uh, yeah. for this this trade deadline coming up, um, or maybe even next off season if if they did a, a deal and then uh, you know a sign and trade with Suter. But um, I just see you know like you said, Devin, two two years ago, three years ago, Hronik was definitely the core of this team with Bertuzzi and Larkin, and now we've slowly gotten away from that it's more you know Raymond Sider and Larkin uh so my thoughts are he's you know Logan absolutely he doesn't have to worry about the stress of the top line all he needs to do is have a mediocre season and he is going to be good there uh but I just think there are a lot of young guys coming up that are really ready to push uh and this could be that season that if he's not really improving or you know getting better consistently or staying as consistent top end uh he might find his way out sooner than later and real quick and the thing about Heronic is that um, just based on the game he plays, um, his success is always going to be defined by the points he puts up. If he yeah. doesn't put up points, mm-hmm. he's, he's, he, he's not giving you any value at all. Yeah. Um, but you do need him to become like average, at least average defensively. Cause that's like the big downside with him is that if he's not doing offense, he's definitely not protecting your own end. So uh, <laughs> he needs to be putting up points. If he can be average defensively and put up points, then he's yep. going to be a core member of the team. Yeah, and that's a great, great point there, Devin. Absolutely. All right. Let it let us know what you think down below in the uh, section. But right now we're getting back into our new segment that we are calling Off the Rush, where I am going to give Logan and Devin two questions, and they have to give me a max of two sentences to answer these. And one of these is a yes or no, but I'll give them a sentence to explain the answer (laughs) if you would like please play along below in the uh, comment section just start it off your comment off the rush and then let us know your thoughts and we will be happy to play along with you in the comment section all right starting out logan coming over to you 
How many rookies will make their NHL debut for the Red Wings this season? I think Edvinson, Sabrango, Berggren, and Soderblom. Four. All right. Devin, how many rookies will make their NHL debut for the Red Wings this season? I really want to say four, but I'm going to say three, and I will say it's Berggren, Edvinson, and Johansson. Oh, okay. All right. I have five for the season. I have Berggren, Edvinson, Sabrango, Johansson, and Soderblom. I think at least at one point, all five will get on the team. All right. Yes or no, Devin, Philip Zadina will still be a Red Wing when the 2022-23 season is over. Yes. (laughs) Okay. I swear I just heard like four no's about 10 minutes ago. (laughs) I'm I'm choosing to believe in him. So, yes. (laughs) <laughs> Logan, yes or no? Philip Zadina will still be a Red Wing when the 2022-23 season is over. Oh, just to clarify, is this the off season or just when the regular season ends? Regular season. Okay. Regular season. Regular season. I'm going to say yes. Off okay. season, I'm going to say no. Off season is where yeah, that's where I'm going with it. All right. Well, either way, I already wrote down my answer and scrolled past it, so I'm not going back up. So, I'm saying <laughs> not no. A I will be the odd one out. All right. We're going to take a quick breath and reset the show. This is the grind line. And I am Kyle, not your host here with Devin little and Logan horn. And we're talking red wings hockey before we get back into it. We wanted to remind you to sign up for the morning skate, a morning newsletter delivered to your inbox Monday, Wednesday, and Friday jam packed with the best hockey stuff on the planet. It's a daily dose of the latest NHL news, rumors, history, funnies, quizzes, and more. Just a little hockey fun and information delivered to you for free from the hockey writers. Sign up today at morningskate.io. All right, moving on. The Red Wings are reportedly working on a deal with Larkin. Is this the right move? And what do you think the deal should look like? Logan, I'm going to come over to you first here. Red Wings. Working on a deal with Captain Dylan Larkin. What do you think this deal should look like? And is it the right move? I, I almost wanted to say no, but I just, like, <laughs> I, I don't know. Like as a joke, but. Like, are I we just, trolling the, our listeners here? Like, <laughs> it still felt like it wouldn't be a good idea. Just, you know, just for my. I was joking, for I My swear. future. Yeah, that'll just get, that clip would just haunt me. Obviously, it's the right decision. They need to bring him back. Um. I would love to see an extension before the season starts um, because I expect Larkin to have another great year um, and that'll only make his value go higher. It'll just continue to rise and it'll cost you more and more. Um, Looking at some contracts to compare to, there's the classic uh, Mika Zibanejad in New York, eight by eight and a half million. Um, That would be, some people would be pretty upset with the price there. Some people seem to think he's only worth like 7 million or something, but you pay, if you believe he's the top line center that he has been, or at least he was last year and was a few years before that, um, that's what you got to pay him. Yeah. Um, but the one that I like the most for right now, for the flat cap world, for hopefully some, some hometown loyalty discount, which probably doesn't exist, but people like to say exists. Um, I think of the Kevin Fiala deal when he got traded to the LA Kings Mm-hmm. Seven years by was it seven point eight five million, basically eight. I'd love to see it be eight by eight million, you know, give or take half a million, as if that's an amount of money that is a small <laughs> I, deal. I will take that yeah, for sure. sure. Yeah. yeah, for sure. <laughs> give it to um, me, Dylan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's gonna it's gonna be pretty pretty pricey, and it's probably gonna be the longest deal on the books now yeah. after um, cops deal. And Sherrod, I think, uh, broke that barrier. Um, but like the salary cap will hopefully start rising again. The flat cap will end. Um, shouldn't be too difficult to manage eight, eight and a half, maybe even closer to nine million. Um, but one thing they have to be aware of is setting an internal cap structure. Yeah. This will be the, the first big deal for this core. And that'll help you kind of set expectations for contracts for future stars. Like it'll be tough for, for Raymond in two years to try to get a new contract and argue that he's worth more than Larkin. And that could kind of help you manage your, your cap system a little bit. So that's something I'm sure they're aware of and they're working on, but yes, they should sign him again. 
I just want to clarify again. <laughs> <laughs> so your your ideal contract for him is looking about eight by eight, is what yeah. I'm hearing. Okay. Yeah. And I think that's I think you're absolutely right in the ballpark for where he should be. And and yes, to get get this on the record again. This is the right deal to make. Let's all say it together. Yes, <laughs> this is the right deal to make. Uh, I mean, you're, you're, you know, we've talked about this. He is the core. He is the heart and soul of this team right now. Uh, so absolutely. Devin, coming over to you. We already know this is the right deal to make. Larkin's going to get it another deal. So what should that look like? We're not even going to ask you if you think it is good. What should it look like? Because you know you're going to do it. <laughs> So wait, just just to recap what Logan what Logan said, uh, Kyle, just just to make just double check me if I'm wrong. Uh, Logan said that they should not re-sign Larkin. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think uh, that's producer Matt. Yep. Yeah, that's, that's about right. right. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyways, uh, this no. is my last episode on the grind line. Thank you very much. <laughs> it was a good run. It was a good run. Light <laughs> him up. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, no, honestly, uh, I 100 percent agree with everything that Logan did, in fact, say. Um, Thank you. Wait, times- you don't want to be no. <laughs> <laughs> Sign him eight times eight is probably ideal pretty much right there in that ballpark, give or take 500,000, just like you said, Logan. Um, and uh, yeah, I also really like the uh, call out about establishing a cap structure um, because uh, we, we talked about this, I want to say a year or two ago when we were talking about, um, I don't, I don't even remember who we were talking about at the time, but it was, that, that is very important. And I think that uh, you made a really good call out with, Raymond because uh cider and Raymond are going to need a new deal at the same time. And mm-hmm. Cider's going to get money. He's there's no way he's not. He's good. He's the team's yeah. top defenseman. Um, and we've already seen big old contracts handed out to guys like Darnell nurse and, and others. So I'm, I'm fully expecting Cider to get nine and a half, $10 million on his next deal. Like even as a 23 year old um, Raymond, on the other hand, unless he absolutely explodes over the next two years, uh, yeah, I think he's going to have a really hard time pointing at the team's top center and saying, I deserve more than him. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think it is very important to get Larkin signed first and foremost, B, get him signed for a long time, pretty much make him a Red Wing for life. And then mm-hmm. C, get him at a cap hit or a, a, uh, a cap, yeah, a cap hit, a number that makes sense for the team and establishes a good structure for the team to work with as they start to dole out these, uh, these big money contracts um, for their, their most important players. Yeah. Both of you are, are extremely right in terms of not only do you have to pay him because he deserves it and he is the heart and soul of this team and the, the leader, but you know, you have to have that future in mind when you set this up. So mm-hmm. I absolutely think this is the right move. Uh, and honestly, I have something in the ballpark around eight years, 56 to 60 million. So seven to seven and a half a year. Um, that's, that's a million to a million and a half more than he makes. Now he's at 6.1. Um, and that's a pretty good team friendly deal. Yeah. It keeps him in Detroit for pretty much the rest of his contract add a little bit of a hometown discount, but at the same time, now, when you're looking at, uh, you know, um, uh, Raymond in a couple of years, you can put him somewhere in the, in the six to, you know, six, five ballpark. Um, and he'll be pretty comfortable there uh, and then lock him up for a pretty long term as well. So, uh, the one thing that kind of scared me off was the new Huberto deal where he's yeah, getting yeah. 10.5 over the next eight years and he's older. Uh, but he's also putting up hundred points and, and Larkin's only, eclipse the 70 point mark once. So, um, I think, you know, you, you got to kind of look at some of these contracts, Logan, I think you did a great job of comparing it to the Fiala deal. Um, I think you're absolutely right. It probably will be in the eight to eight, five range. Um, I was kind of thinking more on the team friendly type side. Uh, but yeah, I, I would be happy with anywhere from, you know, 60 to 68 million for him. I would love to see Larkin's cap hit come in at 7.1 just to match his Jersey number, but Probably I mean, and that's, happen. that's a million dollar race from where he is this year. Yeah. Uh, and you know, it's, I, I feel like he's 
he's not undervalued much. I mean, a little bit, but not a whole lot. And if he wants to be with the Red Wings, which he's said numerous times, he would love to finish his career there. He respects, uh, you know, the players that got to finish their career there. I think there's something that came out. He said after the uh, Malkin deal, like he was kind of jealous that he got to sign and play his whole career there. Uh, so there's certainly, you know, precedent that he might be willing to take something um, of only a million dollar raise in terms of, you know, also preparing for bringing in better yeah. contracts in the future as well. Mm-hmm. So 7.1 would be amazing. And I think he'd be perfectly happy with that. He doesn't seem like those guys that really cares about the money more than wanting to play for the culture of the team. All right. That's, that was a good, good little section. You know, we found out Logan's true feelings on the captain. There, so. <laughs> Just kidding. Logan. All right. Move, <laughs> moving on. Tyler Bertuzzi is also on the last year of his deal. But there isn't the same chatter about working on an extension. So what is the deal with Bertuzzi? And Devin, kick us off. Well, there's a couple things going on here. (laughs) Uh, One, if you remember uh, two, three years ago, it's time's flying. Uh, Bertuzzi uh, signed a one-year deal. And I'm pretty sure it was like right before they went to arbitration. And that was uh, Eisenman's first or second year as general manager. Um, and then even after that, he signed the two-year deal he's on right now. So he's never, Eisenman's never given him term like at all. Um, and I think that, uh, that usually says something. I feel like that, like you rarely give a player like Tyler Bertuzzi one year. I realized that he hadn't really proved himself yet, but he had, uh, he had entrenched himself as kind of a member of like, uh, like a real member of the team. He gave Mantha four years. Remember? Um, and I think Bertuzzi was Mm -hmm. right there with Mantha. So I think that um, as much as Arzaman always says he's getting help for Dylan and Tyler, meaning Dylan Larkin and Tyler Bertuzzi, I just don't think that he views Tyler Bertuzzi as the same level of core player as Larkin. Um, And remember, I mean, we've talked about this number of times as well. His name's out there for like Mm -hmm. being a a trade target. I firmly believe that uh, if the Red Wings aren't pushing for a playoff spot at a, the 2023 trade deadline for is going to be gone. I he's uh he's probably going to be their very best trading asset. And um, I, I honestly think the reason why they haven't um, they aren't working on a deal because I think that they're in a wait and see situation with him. Is he going to replicate the season he had? Cause he did have a really, really good season, but he's yeah. got to do it again. He's got to earn the money because you don't, you don't give, you know, millions and millions and millions of dollars for one 30 goal season. You got to do it again. Ken Holland. <laughs> Amen, brother. Amen. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, he's, and then he's also got to show that he's going to, you know, really step up as a leader of the team. He's got to, you know, and also final point here is I could probably talk about this for two more minutes. Um, <laughs> he plays the type of game that does not age well. Mm-hmm. When Bertuzzi is 33 years old, I guarantee you he is not going to be the Tyler Bertuzzi that everyone loves right now. And it's simply because he plays that style of hockey where he takes a lot of hits. He goes into the dirty areas of the game and he already had a back injury. Those are notoriously hard to come back from. And usually when you do come back, it's still not a hundred percent and it's only going to take more punishment. Remember what happened to Henrik Zetterberg. Yep. Um, So you've got to be really weary about handing out a big long-term deal to guys like Tyler Bertuzzi, no matter how important they are to your team and your culture, because you give them an eight-year deal now, and then three years from now, it uh, already looks like a bad situation. Remember, Justin Abdicator is going to be on the Red Wings books until 2027. That (laughs) does not need to happen again. Absolutely. And, and, Henrik Zetterberg didn't play the same style of hockey that Tyler Bertuzzi plays. Nope. Uh, so even, you know, if you bring a player like Bertuzzi in that has back issues, uh, it, it's likely going to happen again. So I think, you know, great call outs there, Devin, um, you know, well, well thought out and put out there. I mean, mm-hmm. there's just so many, so many uh, variables that are happening right now. that are kind of stacked up against Bertuzzi in terms of, of staying with Detroit long-term. Um, and yeah, I think you're absolutely right. You just don't give a player like Bertuzzi a long-term deal. So Logan, I will give you the final word on this. Tyler Bertuzzi also on the last year of his deal is not getting the same chatter about working on an extension. 
What is the deal there? Uh, I think Devin, you hit it on, you hit the nail on the head with, uh, they don't quite see him at the same level of the core. Maybe if you have the top level with Raymond Sider, Larkin, whoever else you want to put there, he's not far down, but maybe just the next step down. Yeah. Um, it's clear Larkin's going to be extended probably this off season, maybe early on in the season, which happens sometimes. Um, I, I don't think they have any plans to extend Bertuzzi at least until the end of the season. Yeah. Um, Cause you know, like you said, they could be shopping him. They could get a pretty decent return from, especially at the trade deadline, retain some salary, maybe it's just the last year. So yeah, that's a pretty valuable asset for a playoff run. Um, he'd be a great player for that. Wouldn't mind seeing that in Detroit, but anyway, um, <laughs> but also, you know, maybe he doesn't replicate last season. Maybe he doesn't score 30 goals. Maybe he's back to low twenties, which isn't bad. Um, but that changes your perception. If right now you'd sign him for a medium term deal for five, six plus million dollars. Um, Cause you think he's a 30 plus goal scorer, maybe up to 40 with the right players. Um, and then he has a season where he's at 20 again, then maybe you're like, Oh, maybe it's 20 to 30 goals we can expect from him. <laughs> and that drops the cost significantly for sure. It does. Yeah. Um, the difference between 29 and 30 goals is more than one goal, apparently. Uh, Cause it's, <laughs> it's a big marker. Um, I don't know. I, I don't think he'll have quite as good a year just because mm-hmm. the top six is stronger. Um, he'll have a little less, he'll be a little less, uh, puck dominant on the on the power play especially with Perron um I think he'll take less shots he's he's a great shooter he's had great shooting percentages through his career but I think his shot volume is going to go down with those new guys in the top six um I don't know I I don't think he'll be extended I think the reason we don't hear about it is because they're not planning it they're not yeah. talking to anyone about it because they're not talking to him about it no I think you're absolutely right I think they're they are not right now in talks they are not actively looking to extend and i think a lot of it is part of what are you going to do for us this season and Hmm. you know if if there's a chance we want to we want to move you at the deadline and get something in back from you know from you and um you know hopefully you know they'll find a good partner there and like you said having the rest of a season to hold on the books and take that cap hit you know, retaining 50% of the salary when you ship them off is so much better than sending someone that has a year or two left on their, uh, on their salary and retaining 50% of it to move them. And I feel like with his situation, especially needing to play in Canada during the playoffs, likely yep. uh, he's teams are going to probably have to ask to retain some salary because there's going to be some salary lost in some of those games. So, um, you know, in the roundabout way of saying, but anyway, uh, before we move on, I just want to make sure everyone knew that the, uh, uh, the Ken Holland was for Pat and Ozzy watching at home. (laughs) All right. Finishing off our show today is our second on the rush or off the rush segment. So please, again, follow along down there, answer the questions, let us know your thoughts and play along with us on the show. So starting off, uh, let's go to Devin. How many points will Larkin post this season? I'm going to go with his uh, jersey number, 71. Ooh, I love it. Logan, how many points will Larkin post this season? I was going to do that. Uh, I'm going to go bolder. (laughs) I'm going to go more bold then. I'm going to go 78. Ooh. All 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 right. I have, if healthy, 75 to 80. So I'm, I'm right there with you we're, guys. We're, we're all in the we're, same range. Yeah. yeah. We're in the uh, 70 to 80 range, which I love. And I think that's exactly where he will fall. All right. Too many sentences, Kyle. All right. Logan, <laughs> true or false? Tyler Bertuzzi will have another 30 goal season this year. False. Devin, true or false? Tyler Bertuzzi will have another 30 goal season this year. False. I think he gets 20, might even get 25, but not 30. Woo. Clean sweep. We got a false. All right. Play along below. And in case we haven't convinced you with our first two plugs, sign up for the morning skate, the morning hockey newsletter delivered to your inbox Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. If you want to keep up on all the upcoming world junior action, then the morning skate is the perfect way to start your day with hockey news. That's it for this edition of the grind line from all of us here at the hockey writers and our crew here at the grind line. We will see you next week.